We're taking your questions today. We've got a lot of big questions, and I think we get into some good debates on today's episode, diving a little deeper on all sorts of important players. We're talking Alvin Kamara, little Deshaun Watson, Baker at the end, and most importantly, we found out that a made-up word is a real word, and you can add it to your vocabulary. Like this video, subscribe, share with your friends, and let's enjoy this offseason together. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Thursday, March 31st, the Fantasy Footballers back with you. That's the first time I scared myself with the intro. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fiery. I don't know if I was a little closer to the microphone than I normally am or what happened, but you just, I maybe you just jacked up for this episode, man. <laughs> Is that it? I think so. Uh, but here we are. Intro has been completed. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, Judge Giamatti, Al Borland with you. How you doing, Brooksy? Excellent. Yeah? You doing okay? Yeah. Ha having having a good having a good day? Yeah, it's a good Wednesday. All right. Well, I mean, Thursday. It's Thursday, Brooks. Yeah. Way to ruin the illusion. Have you, um, and they, um, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to needle or poke or anything. This is just genuine concern from one friend to another over the live airways. Have you recovered from your very illustrious uh, but disappointing dynasty mm. fantasy football season where you were, you were on a, what, a 10-game winning streak into the playoffs? It was on then, a rocket ship. And then fell short, oh, wait, in the title game? Yeah. Uh are you are you over that? Maybe. That's I guess a no. not quite. That's a no. Has it been a while since you thought about it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Try Every just, morning. Yeah, I try to block it out. But now you're thinking about it. Yeah. 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 What and a great so start to the day. And you're still sad. <sighs> yeah, I'm not over mine either, Brooksy. So we can be sad together. But today, we have a lot going on. We've got uh, a, a quick question about a player that I think is on the hearts and minds of many fantasy football managers um, that I'm excited to talk about. We're going to do some mailbag, answer some some big questions on today's show. I want to remind you, you can get involved with the Ultimate Draft Kit right here, right now. You can get into the Dynasty Pass right here, right now at ultimatedraftkit.com and uh, take a look at the new Rookie Mock Draft. My son was asking me about all the big names. Wanted to know the big quarterbacks. He's starting to get his head around towards sure. the new year. Did you, and did you tell him, no, you don't, with regards to the quarterbacks? Well, no. I mean, I told him about Malik Willis, and I told him about mm. Golden Corral. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, we've got a, a tremendous list of wide receivers that we care about, right? Some field stretchers out there, Garrett Wilson. Yeah, no, I love I, – I think this wide receiver class is, is great, and obviously uh, I'm a – Brees Hall, mm -hmm. truther till the end. The the Wright household is having some fallout because of the free agent frenzy. Of now, when I when I walk in the door after you know just a long day here at the Honey, office, I'm home. Just I mean you know work 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 right. work work yeah. Get home and my son's like loosen the tie like. Who who got traded? Who get like immediately? It's not hey dad how are you doing? It's who has changed teams? I need to know immediately because now he has been programmed and desensitized thinking that this crap happens all the time. The NFL has broken him. Yeah, I had the same conversation <laughs> with my son last night where he was like, I had to tell him about Carson Wentz yeah. to the commanders, uh, you know, which is a weird sentence altogether. And then Matt Ryan is the quarterback of the Colts now. Ooh. It's going to be fun, though. I mean, yes. we're, we're going to be – in the thick of it soon enough the draft coming up rookie preview shows jason next yes, week yes i am very excited so if you don't feel up to date on uh the 2022 rookies tune in next week or if you do and you want our uh thoughts on all those prospects i'm i'm always looking forward to this season when we get to break those guys down i do have a question here okay 
I see in our draft doc we we have a fantasy hitman's trade targets mm -hmm. article. Yeah. yeah, that is coming out. Uh, th that no, no, that's live. That's was, that's in, that's in the area that says the dynasty pass was updated, and that includes. Oh, excellent! I have a question about that. I have okay. not looked. Yeah, is Irv Smith? Is Irv Smith Irv a target? Irv Smith is a trade target. My man. Yes. All right. Yes. That's it. That's all I needed was, to make sure. Now, to be clear, that was was that Jason basically stamping his approval on your article, Mike? I at least Irv yeah, Smith. Yeah, <laughs> one out of uh, at least you, you know. You should 20. pick up the the UDK Plus. <laughs> yeah, well, I <laughs> just hadn't point. read that guy. article yet. Um, we'll get you a discount or something. Yeah. Uh, once you join the Foot Clan, <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and jump into the quick question. Trending or ending? All right, will Alvin Kamara bounce back to double-digit rushing touchdowns in 2022? Let me read you his, oh. his history in the rushing touchdown department. Broke into the NFL, 2017, played only 45% of snaps that year, had eight touchdowns. Followed that up with a huge campaign, 14 rushing touchdowns mm. in 2018 with Drew Brees. 2019 with Drew Brees, just five rushing touchdowns. Missed a couple games that year. Then ballooned back up to 16 rushing touchdowns in 2020. Once again with Drew Brees. And then last year, missed a few games, just four rushing yeah. touchdowns. So it's been a, you know, you look at the the player profile on the website and you see this ping pong between double digit years. Um, really, when I look at this situation, I see three years where he was a fundamental piece of the offense with Drew Brees, and two of those years, 14 and 16 touchdowns. Last year, uh, lots of challenges on the offensive side of the ball for this team, including his injuries. I guess I would vote no. I don't think he's going to get back into double-digit touchdowns. What if I change it's, the question mm -hmm. uh, to, does he hit double-digit touchdowns, period? Total. Because Easy. It, yeah, that, yes. that's kind of where I am. I, I it's It's a... Definite no on the rushing touchdowns. He's he had the most rushing attempts, uh, you know, of his career. But the the offense isn't as good, obviously, without Drew Brees. And if you look at just total team points over the last decade, you th they were ninth, eighth, second, fourth, third, third, fifth. See, they're all top ten, and right. then Drew Brees leaves, and they're nineteenth. That's just touchdown scoring opportunities. Now, I agree with you, though. That doesn't mean Alvin Kamara is not good for fantasy. He should score double digit touchdowns. You know, if it's five through the air, five on the ground, great. I I don't really care how they come, but it does take away that upside of five through the air, fourteen on the ground. That 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 window has closed, and it was locked. And then it rusted, so I don't. Oh, I don't no. think that's happening anymore. It will be very interesting to see what happens. I mean, despite the only appearing out of uh, thirteen of seventeen games, this was the highest opportunities he's ever seen. This is the the most rushing attempts. It's the first time over two hundred carries in a season. But that was that felt like a bit of a product of you know the main guys it, like. It, there, there was no duo. There was no Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara. There was no true second running back on the team. So everything went to Kamara. What does the new regime do with Alvin Kamara? There, you know, we had uh, interesting, all uh, just rumors. Never, never anything substantiated, but rumors of Sean Payton thinking that Alvin Kamara was not built to carry a true heavy workload, which. Uh, maybe he's right. You know, the highest opportunities of his career only shows up for 13 games. Uh, so that will be an interesting thing that you have to kind of make your choice of when you're in, in the draft. But to be the running back eight when you had Jameis for the first six games of the season or whatever it was, I can't remember, and then just really not great quarterback play, he's still going to be very, very solid. But his quarterback is Jameis either recovering from the injury or – the the newly minted backup quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, Andy Dalton. Is Mark Ingram under contract or not? He is. He is under. I, th I thought it was one more year. Is he? Yeah, okay. he's under contract, but he's thirty two years old. Right. I would. Not, I mean, I think I would be surprised if they don't go out and draft a running back. They have to. Uh, they did not want to give Alvin Kamara the workload that they gave him last year. Obviously, based on you know all the years of success where they weren't using him that way, but they didn't have a choice. 
Tony Tony right. Brooks James Jones Jr. Yeah. Uh, was injured and then instantly. Yeah, so there was like no other option, and then they finally traded for Ingram, and and that's great. He's under contract, but he's thirty two. It's so confusing they to will, me. They will draft a running back because I thought his deal with Houston, because they traded for Ingram, his deal with Houston was a one year deal. But then when I'm looking up contract information, he's still under contract for twenty twenty two. So I'm a little yeah. confused by that situation. Did they restructure? I, I don't know. I just don't understand how a one year deal becomes a two year deal, but. Um, Nevertheless, I mean, your point is is well said where they were moving on from Ingram. This was an emergency pact. They were trying to find somebody else to fill that void. Uh, I think it does have to do with total scoring, so it's going to be a challenge. And ultimately, this comes down to, and we're, we got early ranking shows immediately following the rookie preview shows. Whew. But right here, right now, which big running backs do you take over Kamara? I mean, Jonathan Taylor's for sure. For sure. King Hen Henry? Yeah, uh, yes. What about Dalvin Cook and CMC? Christian McCaffrey is for sure. And Dalvin Cook to me is for sure as well. Is he? I, okay. Yeah, I think that the he's he's proven great. He didn't look bad and his offense is you've got Kirk, you've got Justin Jefferson. It it, sh it should be more of the same in a redraft. What about Eckler and Mixon Man. and Najee? Where, where does Kamara fall into that? I would take Eckler above uh Kamara and then I think it would be Kamara. All right, so he did sign an extension with uh, the Saints. Yes. Oh, they so. restructured uh, this market. And uh, has Kamara's Cam legal situation is that just gone? There, if if it's, you don't recall, he, he got he got in a bit of a a fight, a scuffle. I I can't remember the exact details of uh, on the top of my head, but back in the uh, was it at the Pro Bowl? Yes. Yeah, the Pro Bowl in Vegas. He. It, it, Something happened. It, preliminary yeah. hearing in court, uh, April twenty fifth. Okay, for that. so but he, so he may even be facing a one or one, one or, or, one or two, two game, game yeah. suspension. Yeah, yep. um, it's going to be interesting. And, and again, there are certain players, and I think Cook Cook is in the same category as Kamara for this, where there is a bit of like excellence fatigue, <laughs> where you just are doing the same thing for the same team for multiple years, and people like. I think a lot of people will bend towards Najee Harris, for example, over Alvin Kamara due to the youth and the fact that you're looking. And this is philosophical. I'm not saying it's wrong, but you, right. you might be looking for something that you haven't seen before as opposed to, I hope I get what I have seen from Kamara. And that's not always... Well, whenever you're looking at, is Dalvin Cook going to have his best year ever? Is Alvin Kamara going to have their best year ever right. this year? No. Could Najee have his best year ever? Like, the arrows are pointing up for the young guys and the hopeful guys. And even if the, it's a slow slope, they're pointing down for the older guys. But I, I think Dalvin has a very good year this year. What about James Conner and Alvin Kamara? I, does well, a, courageous, I would go does a courageous person take James Conner? I would, a crazy person. I think I'd take Kamara. A crazy person. All right. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Well, you mentioned it. Andy Dalton has joined the ranks of backup quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. Congratulations. Joins all the other backup quarterbacks that are currently on the roster, which would be Jameis Winston, <laughs> Taysom Hill. Well, Taysom Hill is now focused. He's locked in. He's going to be a tight end. Well, that'll be interesting for fantasy football. If yeah, he, he's going to be locked into that position, you know that there are going to be some differentiators in the way he's used at tight end. He may throw the football on a single play in that position. He may have some value. I, I'm really curious to see if when he's focused on tight end, does that mean that he is a full-time tight end because even before he he wasn't you know no playing 100 percent of snaps be. he was you can't have a gadget player you can't have Taysom Hill blocking well you can give it a go yeah <laughs> Look, I mean if you okay, got when, when I you have you the can't. backstop of Al Andy Dalton that you didn't have before I mean that kind of but I'm saying structure it, in even the depth chart as a receiving option right they don't have that many receiving weapons in this offense they've got Michael Thomas and then crickets um and so you know, you don't want Evan Ingram blocking, and he's he's out there as a pass catching tight end. Um, that being said, obviously Taysom Hill is a little bit older. It'll yeah. just be interesting to see if he's relevant for fantasy as a tight end. Right now, I would say he's not he's not going to be reliable. And I would say you weren't going to know the truth about his utilization until week one. So he could be a player that you draft with your last pick, 
and just see what happens. We talk about tight ends, right? They're all going to suck. So finding out that right. all of a sudden he's getting 80% of snaps and a few targets and a yes. rush. And it would it would shock me. Like Taysom Hill, for all the amazing football things that Sean Payton did throughout his career, Taysom Hill and his just infatuation with him has has caused so many problems for this team. They keep giving him so much money to be just like a bit player. It's just difficult to – it's one of those things where Taysom – it's not his fault. No, no, no. I'm not blaming Taysom. No, I know. I'm but saying the, Peyton made some really strange decisions there. But many people have been annoyed with Taysom Hill as a concept sure. <laughs> for quite a while. And it's just – he's just doing what he can, man. He's just going out there yeah. being an athlete. And so many times I feel like the restriction on Taysom Hill's utilization was entirely due to him needing to be the insurance quarterback. I heard so, doo-doo. <laughs> well, let's continue. <laughs> Of course you did. Don't mind me. Nice. Uh, John, Just breaking in here. <laughs> Jason's contribution. Um, what do you think about John Harbaugh? Three-year extension for the Ravens coach. Uh, I bet he gets another one and then another one. I mean, you, you know, when you have one of these coaches that have proven they can be around for decades, you don't let them go. Oh, he's been a pretty big John Harbaugh fan. Yeah. Have you followed this Lamar Jackson extension news lately? Yes, I have. So, you know, their their owner came out and really talked about the fact that this is – his quote was unique as can be, essentially, okay. where he's saying Lamar is – he's putting – Lamar himself is putting the extension on the table. Or, I mean, uh, on the back burner. Yeah, that's what I've recently heard, yes. Uh, in part because he wants to go out there and win a title. And, and so maybe it's a bit of gambling on yourself. You want to get paid – a bunch of guaranteed money. You want to be in the Mahomes category. Um, but it's just, it's interesting because they've wanted to extend him. That's what you get out of this this article was that they've wanted to extend Lamar for a long time. They're going to extend Lamar. Lamar likes being there. He came out and reiterated that because people wonder, of course, if you're not getting it done. But he's waiting. He's making the decision to table that discussion. He's going to play on his fifth-year option this year. And he still does not have an agent, right? He is... I believe that is correct. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I I have to believe that if he had an agent, he would not be taking yeah. this approach. He would be getting paid. Like, if Lamar Jackson, like the two different scenarios, okay, the Baltimore Ravens end up barely missing the playoffs or the Baltimore Ravens win the Super Bowl, is his contract extension really that drastically different in those two scenarios? I know the Super Bowl, it turns in... It's probably worth more, but like in the grand scheme of things, I think it's worth it a lot. Really, I think it's worth a lot. More. You do? I do because it's trend. It's where you know MVP season a couple of years ago. Are we are we going to be on the bottom part of this division even with Lamar? Are we going to get over the hump, win a title with Lamar? I think that would be a pretty significant difference in contract extension. I mean, even with the, I would be leveraging the Watson contract of like, look at this dude. Who it's caused complete he, problems. I like this guy didn't play last year. Uh, and you know, the year before that, he had a horrifically bad losing record, and he just got what was two hundred something guaranteed. So yeah, that's that's where we're gonna start. The issue that I've seen come up with the Deshaun Watson contract is the fact that they have these guaranteed clauses for like the you know, almost the the immorality clauses like right, he, the off field stuff. Yeah, he's fine off field, he's guaranteed. That's going to start. Is? Yeah, so he's got immunity against start getting like worked into some of these other contracts now, and cause a, like across positions, superstars. This is right. going to change contracts for the NFL or has the has the uh, potential to do so. Well, and we saw Dak bet on himself in a different scenario, but he even seemingly took the risk and lost that bet by being injured for the right. rest of the year and still got paid all the money. So Lamar is going to get his because he is. Young and a franchise quarterback. I feel like Dak. I can get it there. Of of they, it's the money was the money the Cowboys wasn't offer were offering wasn't enough for Dak, and he needed to do a bit more, in my opinion. Meanwhile, Lamar is like he's he's winning, already been what, the MVP. He's winning what seventy five percent of his games. Like he's he is a winner, man. And hey. I don't know how much of this is wanting to prove yourself versus just a strategy. But if it's a strategy, he won the game. Because of this Watson contract. Right. $80 million more than any other guaranteed quarterback contract in the history of the NFL goes to Deshaun Watson in this deal. And um, there's still plenty of time to get it done. 
Yes, yes. So we'll see. The NFL made a change. Overtime rules. One possession per team in postseason games. The interesting thing to me is that, you know, it makes sense not to change it in the regular season to the degree that you just need to get games over with, right? You can't right. just keep extending games. The postseason thing is, is I think, a good decision, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. But it is a completely different strategy than what you do in the regular season. If I have this thing set up, me personally as a coach, I am taking the ball second 100% of the time. I mean, that's wild. Oh, and it, that would be that would be the, the better strategy. Because, because you know more about what you need to exactly do. Exactly right. And if the other team happens to score, now you get four downs every single uh, attempt. You know, you it's, it's definitely going to be smarter to kick the ball in overtime. This is also a permanent rule change. It was talked about as being like, the one-year trial, this is now how it is going forward. But again, only for postseason, so it won't well, affect fantasy. It'll, it'll be that until a team gets scored on in overtime, they receive the ball, and then have like four fourth down conversions on their drive. And then we'll be back to, let's let's take a look at this. Oh, I thought you were going to say then they get the two-point conversion to win the game. Oh, they, they could do that too? Um, What else do we have? Oh, big ball! Why is this in here? So that we can play this music. <laughs> John Schneider, Seahawks GM, said, Will Disley. This is a pro Will Disley podcast. His leadership is huge. He's a core dude on the offense. Mm. Other teams knew about the talent of Will Disley. And so, I mean, you got Noah Fant there. No Gerald Everett, though. So, uh, any help for either of these guys being a fantasy impact player? Wait, is it still... Is still it still Drew Swag Lock. Daddy up there? Yeah, Swag Daddy Drew Locke okay. is still the quarterback right now. I think DK Metcalf's getting traded. You do? I think he's going to be traded, and he'll be the next. We've had an off season of bomb drops. I'm just going to put right. my. Uh, I'm going to bet on that being the next transaction because they came out. Seattle came out with the exact same language they had on on Russell Wilson and said. We intend to have DK right. Metcalf on this roster next year. Well, he's in the final year of his contract. Yes, he of is. His, of his rookie deal. This is the time that, that you need to pay DK Metcalf. Because um, if you don't, now you're bringing in the, the franchise thing, the disgruntled superstar wide receiver. And ah, man, if they trade DK. I mean, is he gruntled right now? Or is he already disgruntled? I, that is a great question. I don't question. think he's already disgruntled because I don't No, no, no. Is he, is, but is he currently gruntled? Currently gruntled. Which well, is, it, I'm taking as a I, good state of mind. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a good thing? Yeah, because you don't yeah. want, for, you start gruntled. That would have to be a good thing if disgruntled is bad. And then you become disgruntled, yeah. If disgruntled is bad, the dis means okay. that gruntled no. must like be Brooks good. Brooks has been gruntled for a while. <laughs> um, but I think he is gruntled because... That's, I, that's not real, is it? It's a word. That's a word? Pleased, satisfied, and content. And oh, he's so gruntled right now. We don't right use now. gruntled enough. We, oh, well, we, we need to bust this word out. You mean we didn't yes. use gruntled enough, but that will be a staple that's this a, year. That's a top ten word. Oh, How are you sure. this morning? Oh, I'm gruntled. very gruntled. <laughs> um, that's great. Congratulations. I thought I was clan. making a joke. Um, I'm just, I just have a great vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, the nice thing is I don't think he's gotten together with Drew Locke yet, so he's probably gruntled. Okay. Right. You can get disgruntled quick. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as you get together with Drew Locke. Well, and normally that, what do we say? He's Mr. Irresponsible, right? Yeah. So you're probably like, hey, yeah. let's 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 do what Russ is doing with Jerry Judy. Let's get out early. Let's do some routes. Let's practice. DK shows up. Guess who's not there? Oh, yeah. Drew Locke's Drew not Drew Locke's a little up. late. But that's going to be he good. He stopped that's for gonna, a, a morning gonna, Frappuccino. That's going to keep uh, Metcalf gruntled, though. Um, I will say this. Pete Carroll, at the end of that, we intend for him to be with us comment did finish saying there's no way i could imagine playing without him so they said a lot of things about russ that's to, true to andy's point but yeah i'm saying for pete carroll who though is quite old like he <laughs> were you he, looking for a more elegant way to say that <laughs> i yeah, i wasn't sure how hard in the pain i was going to go after it but long in the tooth look he is a a veteran gentleman <laughs> oh my god <laughs> experienced in the he, ways of the world he is yeah, he, look he's he's, he's old in his 70s he's old the transistor radio i believe is older right yeah, yeah as we learned on this show or younger how do you trade a franchise quarterback and then a true number one wide receiver and and just keep going like that is a you are going into rebuild mode 
And they're you, going there now, anyways. But he, I'm sure that at the moment in time, Pete Carroll does not believe that. He thinks he can win because he believes in the old school high T. We're going to run the ball 40 times a game, and but, it's going to work. But but does the general manager believe that? And and when you look, I mean, there's an argument to be made. If you think you're going to be at the basement of that division, which I certainly think they're going to be at the basement of the division, it's, not, it's just For the way sure. it's going to Wait, shake out. Drew Lock. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> You, you don't have Bobby Wagner, who's now competing for jobs. You look at the pick haul that you've received from for right. Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams. Does that not add up to, you know, why have a why have a disgruntled number one receiver yeah. when you could have a bunch of gruntled draft picks? I guess the, the question is, does DK believe he, he deserves Devontae Adams' money? They all do. Yeah, and then I I would not want to pay DK that money. And if I'm DK, start complaining right now when you have a history that is littered with Russell Wilson. Not later when you have a history supplied right. by Drew Locke's yeah. numbers. And you're like, yes, I would have had more than three touchdowns if – I think he's going to be one of the most polarizing wide receivers. He will. If he stays on Seattle, are you, he might be undrafted – Underdrafted because people just don't want to touch that offense, and yes. there could be an opportunity there. I don't know. It'll be a tough call. All right, let's take a quick break. Then we'll answer some very important questions. <laughs> very important, Jason. Yeah. The kinds made just for you. Oh, we have questions for Jason? Well, I, just important ones. Oh. The regular ones you and I handle. Yeah, I'll, right. I'll take the biggies. Uh, okay. Let's jump into the mailbag. Mailbag. Mailbag, yeah! I don't know about that. What? I'm just different. I, was, I liked it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. If you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a, bu uh, submit a button. <laughs> Click the submit a button button. Uh, click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. I could hear Al laughing at that one. You like it when I screw up, don't you? You said but. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. You and, you and Jason are. Oh, two peas in a pod. Yeah. yeah. You said P. Yeah, I was um, waiting for it. Yeah, I was, I was too. Let's jump into a voicemail. Hey, who do you think will win the AFC West next season? Bye. Love the show. Well, that was that's hey. quick and yeah. I mean, it's a question. I threw this one up on Twitter actually a while back, so I'm curious your opinion, and I'll tell you what the Foot Clan said. I think that the Chargers will win. I think they have just as good a quarterback as all of these teams, and I love their head coach, their philosophy. They've upgraded their defense. They're my pick. I think the Broncos will win the division. With Russ, that, like, that team was primed and ready to go last year. And you put a Hall of Fame quarterback on that team, it's uh, it's going to be a big turnaround. For I them. love that pick. I am rooting for the Chargers to win the division. I think the Chiefs win it. I think the Chiefs hold wow. on. Okay. They hold on to it. They figure it out. Draft, free agency, Andy Reid. That's all there is to it. They'll get it done. Chargers, this is the time of year that they get a lot of love. And it's hard yes. because... Does you know? I love Justin Herbert. I love what they did on the defensive side. I think it's going to be very close. The far and away runaway winner was the Chargers on the poll. Yeah, it makes sense. Twenty one thousand votes. Forty seven percent picked the Chargers. The real surprise mm -hmm. is who came in number two on that poll, and it's the Raiders at twenty one percent, which they very well could compete in that division uh, as well. They have added a lot of pieces to both sides of the ball, and they were a ten win team. It makes complete sense, and they have every ability to win this division. It's just very difficult, and usually at the end of the day when you go, let's see which team wins the most in a division, it comes down to quarterback. And Derek Carr is a fine quarterback. Right. He can he can win games. But Derek Carr is not Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, and Russell Wilson. He's just not on that Hall of Fame level. Is it mathematically possible now with the extra team in the playoffs – for all four teams in one division to it make is it. It is possible. Is it? Yes, it is. I believe that there is a – Kyle can confirm, but I think there's a bet out there on that. Yeah, you can put some money on that right now. The Raiders' win total is eight and a half. And, what I mean, you you were right. Derek Carr's not as good as these other quarterbacks. He still made the playoffs over Justin Herbert last For year. science, does anyone know what the odds are on that? I mean, you probably get like plus – It's got to be a 1,000. I it mean, was, I don't I don't. It know. was like plus 2,000. Yeah. Ooh. 
Okay, okay. Not impossible, but you do have to go through the yes. gauntlet of playing one another throughout the well, year. Yeah, you need which a, just knocks off that win total. You need a bunch of stuff not related to these teams. <laughs> I mean, it, it's so brutal because the Raiders' win total is eight and a half, and I can see them winning. I can see them winning twelve games, right? And I can see them winning four games. That's well, how I feel. Four is too few, but I get what your point is. Like it's it's a very difficult division, and they could end up losing the majority of their division games. Don't the doesn't the AFC West have Kyle? Who's their Who's their uh, NFC matchup next year? Because I think that I, I saw like a schedule made for who the quarterbacks Mahomes is facing, and it was a gauntlet even outside of the division. So I'll, we'll I'll find it. it. Will you figure that out? Yeah, I just know that the schedules might at least for the Chiefs it looked like there were some pretty challenging games even outside of the Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, um, Derek Carr equation so uh for what it's worth the chiefs came in last on the poll the broncos just above them 15.7 to 15.3 the afc south and the nfc west so wait, i mean wait. nfc west oh yeah no, let me read let me read through this nfc again. west is right because i know we play against russell again this year even though he's a bronco oh my mm. god that means that they play the the, the seahawks yep oh boy uh, that's good TV. That's great TV. <laughs> it is. Um, Russ, Russ is putting out a, a, a good amount of content equally among all three wide receivers lately. Getting out there early in the morning. Did you see that video with him and Jerry Judy now? Oh, unlimited. Uh, always. He's, uh, he's a talented fella. Yep. Likes to work. All right, Instagram question. Michael Pittman and Terry McLaurin are fighting for my flex. Who's oh. going to win? Oh, man. Michael Pittman and Terry McLaurin, who's going to win? So Michael Pittman will have Matt Ryan throwing in the ball. Terry McLaurin has Carson uh, uh, SS. What is it? Uh, stupid, stupid, dumb face. So SS. No, 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 no. No? We're not that's going just, with it? That's just really intense, man. Yeah, but it is, to be fair, that yeah. is what Mike has called him. Yeah. And You're not in on that? Stupid, stupid, dumb face? Uh, yeah. You've always been the Carson Wentz hater here. Right. I don't think Andy and I have hated Carson Wentz nearly as much as you do. That's true, but you know who also hates him now? The Indianapolis Colts. They do not like Carson Wentz. You want to know who's going to hate him soon? <laughs> yeah, well, the I know. Commanders. Yeah, Terry, Terry McLaurin. Um, I, man, I, Terry, I think, is the better wide receiver, but Matt Ryan is the much better quarterback. That's a really tough question. It's a call. tough question. I'll take Terry. I'll take Terry because of what I think this offense is going to need from the passing game. It is so, a very but, but th uh, very close. It is a very close call. I will take Pittman. He's 24 years old. I think he's still coming into his prime. We Going obviously have not three. we have not seen his best. He's about to We're going to see if Which he levels up. Which one are you up. talking about? And well, McLaurin is actually a little older, right? He's 26. Aren't 20, they both well, coming into year 3? 27. No, well, or, no. No, Terry McLaurin is coming into year four. He needs a new contract. Yeah, and, he's and one he was, ahead of Pittman. Yeah, yeah, and he was drafted a little bit older as well. He was an an older prospect. Yeah, he'll so, be turning twenty seven. Um, so he's I, on the DJ Moore schedule. Yeah, except way older in life because DJ Moore is still like 19, like Pete Carroll. 19. Got yeah. it. Uh, but I I think that Michael Pittman has a chance to really level up this year and be a one. I could see him being a. Uh, a, a wide receiver one easier than Terry McLaurin this year. I am going to be curious what the Colts do in the draft regarding the the wide receiver position. They they need some. It doesn't necessarily take away from Pittman, but they need some young blood. They do need some help. I do know that they still, for some <laughs> reason, <laughs> yes. believe in Paris yeah. Campbell. They've they've said that they you know that they still think he's got a lot to offer. They're wrong, but they believe it. Instagram question from Fancy Pool Boy. Hmm, okay. How early is too early to draft Debo? <sighs> yeah, we're... Thank you. I mean, this is a really good question to me because where where would you fault somebody at drafting the player that finished at number two at wide receiver? The The biggest... The hardest part for Debo Samuel going into this year is... We don't know who the quarterback is going to be. I think that the odds on favorite is still that it is Trey Lance. So, it, while he is technically not a rookie, it's essentially his rookie season. His first season as a full-time starter. And we've we've talked about 
at length, you know, of how how wide receivers fare with a with a rookie wide, uh, quarterback, and it is just not well. Yeah, so it would be a a downgrade if Trey Lance is the starter. Yeah, I mean the the reality is, D Debo's such a an enigma. He only had seventy seven receptions. Uh, but he got the ball 59 times right. on the ground. So he's touching the ball a lot. He's the centerpiece of this offense. I think the first round is is off limits for me. That's where – that's too – to answer the question, how high is too high, I'm not taking him in the first. I think you can make an argument in the second because of what he represents for this offense. I mean, it goes both ways, right? Like, he had eight rushing touchdowns. And touchdowns are the not sticky stats, so those could very easily, easily go away, especially if they – don't have the running back injuries that they had this year. Or they add some depth in the draft. And if those go away, then Debo is a good wide receiver, not a fantasy superstar. But on the other hand, he didn't have eight rushing touchdowns for no reason. He was unstoppable and dominant, and they said, oh, let's let him score all of these, and that could happen again. It's really easy to trust Shanahan to get the ball to his best players. And you talk about the Jeff Wilson signing. Oh, you got your backup. Mostert's gone. Some of that could equation could just be like, yeah, we really liked how it went when we gave the ball to Debo out of the backfield, and we won all those games consecutively. Like it's not like everything's down the field for Debo. So while I think maybe it would it would bring a lot more hesitation, there's still an outcome where Trey Lance is a starter and Debo just replicates. Sure. Uh, right now, what I can find here for underdog their their current ADP, which because you can you can draft right now if you want. Uh, right now, Debo is going. At the beginning of the second, but behind Cooper Cup, Jamar, Jefferson, Justin, Justin Jefferson, Adams, and Hill. It will be interesting to see. I was going to ask Tyreek versus Debo. That we'll, was the big we'll, question we'll for me. We'll see if the uh, the ADP shifts now with the, the trades. Or what anything. are the wide receivers behind Debo? Uh, Diggs, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb. Would you take Tyreek in Miami or would you take Debo? Because, I mean, Tyreek has wow. is, is got – Yeah. It's a rookie quarterback for him. They've never played together. Well, yeah, yeah. He's, I think I'd go Debo. I would go Tyreek, but I don't blame you at all for going Debo because I, you know, who, which guy finishes outside the top fifteen at wide receiver more likely might actually be Tyreek. But man, that's that's tough. All right, Twitter question from Jacob. Love the show. Dynasty trade question: Would you trade Dalvin Cook for Darnell Mooney in a first? I wouldn't right now personally i yeah. would not either uh, I, I think you can probably get more but th then that's the reason i would say no is because i think you can get more i don't hate the trade i think i the, don't love it though i think top to bottom the bears are a bottom five team in the entire league their roster is not great and so that may have ramifications here. Obviously, Mooney's going to have a longer career at this point moving forward than than Delvin Cook. Yeah. But how good is it? <laughs> Did, were either of you uh, – maybe you knew this. I didn't uh, – you know, they just signed uh, Byron Pringle mm -hmm. over to the Bears opposite uh, of Mooney. And I was really surprised to find out he's 28 years old. Pringle? Yeah. I did not – I must have missed the first few years of his career. I uh, think most people did. Yeah, I mean, I think it was he was muddled on special teams and not being super involved in the offense. But yeah, I mean, that's not a headline signing for that roster. Byron Pringle, right? They need help. Oh wow, he's only played three years, so I didn't miss the beginning. He just was drafted super well, old. He wasn't drafted. Like, I think he fought his way onto a roster. Yeah. Uh, all right. Instagram question. <laughs> oh, this is great. From Jay Sourwin three says, "Why doesn't Jason say goodbye at the end of each show?" Oh, that's uh, that's just Mike's Mike's gig. That's, yeah, that's my job. Same reason. Yeah, exactly. Same reason. I don't know mailbag. Same reason. Mike right. doesn't eat churros. Like we have our things that we are responsible. Well, for. I eat churros. So, I think they're writing too because like Andy usually says goodbye or signs off in some way. So I think that's where they're coming from. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I'll say a quick. Uh, I'll close it out, and then Mike is there to, to just. I'm the ex fill the gap exclamation point. Too many cooks in the kitchen can get you in trouble. <laughs> Speaking of churros, mm. have oh you was just but one, before we get to the churros, uh, what if we'll try it for this show? I'll be good, and you oh, hit okay. with the buy. Oh, absolutely. 
But what? you guys are going to try to make it sound We're, yeah. Yeah. like one person? Because people already confuse your voices, apparently. Yeah, well, that's the funny thing about this question is uh, he, he thinks it's actually me that says goodbye at the end of every oh. episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't forget. You can you throw your voice well. I mean, between the drops for the show and the welcome. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this one's interesting. Instagram question from Easy K P Z says Dynasty trade Juju or Calvin Ridley. Oh, uh, you. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy. You one. You got to go Juju. You got to go with the player who's actually playing and, and, and in a really good situation. Yeah, his situation is great. He's younger. He's playing football. That's a home run. It's. I find myself now in the place where since I've traded for Juju before this transaction to the Chiefs and the Tyreek move. You question your bias? No. Oh. No, I mean, I think, I'm, I think everyone is now accepting what Juju is and isn't in the NFL. But I don't think I'm shopping him. I think the fun of fantasy football is to see what happens when something interesting happens. And I just want that to happen on my team. Yes. Uh, Does that make sense? Oh, it, because I'm 100% guilty of that. I, mean, I ev Every time I hit in free agency, I keep that player. Like that's just uh, that that's just my personality is I'm going to I'm going to ride this thing out if I'm left holding the bag for something I could have traded a bit ago, so be it. It's I'm just going exciting. For home runs. It's exciting. It's yes. fun. It's it's new and he's still young and who knows? It's Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. That what if? It, yeah, and and mm -hmm. just to illustrate, we've brought up my dynasty startup draft. I'm in a couple of times, but Juju went in the sixth round, and Calvin Ridley went in the twelfth round. So the value is is gapped there. I mean, Ridley is it's he's he's like four giant Riddler question marks. Yes, where it's like the suspension of and the betting and the team will he be there and the and, mental health will he be there and will he. Play football. Last right. we saw him, he chose to not play at all. And yeah, and then he needs a new contract. It's like there are. Is he the, and he's is he the Riddler? Oof. I don't know. Calvin Wait, Calvin Ridley? Riddler? Goodness gracious. Yeah, he is. We have to wait a whole year for him to come back. <sighs> and we just. Make some more headlines, him. Calvin. <laughs> Calvin Riddler. Eh, eh, it's eh, right there. We'll, we'll see. see. I'm yeah. in. You guys like Golden Corral, though, right? Oh, Golden Corral's great. It's all you can eat, baby. <laughs> Yeah, no, I. I'm, I'm talking for Matt Corral. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jason. I think <laughs> you just, any, just didn't mean it in general. Any and all buffet references. I'm gonna be in. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> one more for you. Instagram from Justin Allen Robinson or Amari Cooper this season. A lot of people answered. I, I posted who's a player that you will. Not draft yeah. when you should draft because of previous scars. Al Robinson's name was up there a lot. Oh, he is 100% on my do not draft list. And I'm fine. We've talked about this. I can be wrong about that. I'm, I'm not saying that no one should draft Allen Robinson. I have chosen that I think he is not going to be um, anything special. And so I'm fine to be wrong on that. But he, I, I would definitely take Amari Cooper over Allen Robinson. And... Is um, that on the – just to be clear, is that across the board or is that on the basis that you think OBJ is going to be re-signed? Like, you look at the depth chart on the week one of the season and it really feels like like there's a world where Allen Robinson outperforms everybody but Cooper Cup on this offense. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some projection going on behind the scenes there. I, I think that it's a – there's a world where Baker is actually the backup for the Browns this year – and so when you don't have Deshaun Watson, you're not dropping too far. And I do think that Beckham will be back for uh, the Rams. I would take – I'd take Robinson. I think that the – looking at it, if if they both truly hit, I think that Robinson's ceiling is higher than Amari Cooper this year. And you have – like the way I'm projecting it, Watson will miss games this year. Um, I just want to say something. I'm really proud of you, Mike. For, oh, for Alan Robinson personally wrecked you this last yes. year. You chose him. You didn't think he'd fall to where you were. You chose him over the player you thought you were going to grab at your draft spot. Yes. And he, I mean, he just flung poop in your face all year. And you yes. are saying, these. you can't hurt me. These scars have healed. 
and I am willing to go back in on you. Because I find that it's that I'm very vindictive uh, right now toward yeah. Alan Robinson. And you love Melvin Gordon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's resign, <laughs> baby. Any other thoughts? Goodness gracious. No. Okay. No, wait, did you didn't weigh in. Would you go Robinson or Cooper? Amari Cooper. <laughs> Hanging with Mr. Yeah, Cooper. Yeah, I mean, he's got the cool drop. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I mean, speaking of that Watson Baker situation, how do you do it if you're Baker? How do you walk into I, the, How do you walk into I that locker room? How do you know. walk into the front door other than to pick up your paycheck? I totally agree. I mean, it's one of those things. Maybe you. Sit I don't out. know if I would do it. I get that, and he might sit out. He's obviously a a, a proud man who already put out his like PR statement before right. Watson was signed that he sounded like he wasn't coming back. That being said. There was not a trade market for you, Baker. Mm -hmm. And his agent is probably saying, hey, you might need some film. Because what we saw last was you injured, and nobody's coming and knocking. It doesn't cost much to get you, and there's no potential suitors right now. So the best thing you can do is act like a grown-up, go keep your head up high, say the right things, play well, and you will go. So I mean, if he yeah, goes and plays for six missed games and plays well, at his age and former number one guy, he'll get a big contract from someone the following year. Or Jacoby Brissett plays those six games and Baker's the third string quarterback. That's oh. not active on game day until they find a trade partner. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <sighs> and and I, maybe I'm tr maybe I'm thinking too too much on the dark side. But if you're Cleveland, are you one hundred percent sure? You can put all the eggs in the basket of Baker as our backup. I know, like, they got Jacoby, but, like, can you really plan? No. That Baker is going to be the guy who fills in the gap? Or or is Baker like, God, caught a flat, caught a flat on the way to the game. What, Sorry, y'all. What you need is you need, you need film, but not yeah. from Baker. You need it from these other starters around the league. And when the Drew Locke film with a right. different jersey comes on or one of those teams – and you, or when the Carson Wentz experiment goes sideways, that's when hopefully he finds himself a new home. And the, it's in the Browns. Uh, it's to their benefit to move him because you're going to have an asset that isn't a disgruntled old uh, backup. Yeah, a gruntled Baker is more fun. He wasn't gruntled for long there. Well, I'm saying off season or, or he's, off off field. Him in the commercials. Was yeah, he's very gruntled in the commercials. He, you know who was never gruntled was Jarvis and OBJ. <laughs> they were never gruntled there. That's true. That's true. All right, that'll do it for us. Thank you for supporting the show, following the show, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers to watch. Good. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.